Cornwall has been a producer of tin and copper since the Bronze Age. Driven by our human desire for metals, mining has shaped the people and landscape of Cornwall for thousands of years. When South Crofty Mine closed in 1998, many thought this was the end and that tin mining in Cornwall would be gone forever. But efforts to restart the mine literally began the day it closed and 23 years later, tin has once again emerged as a fundamental metal that we need for our daily lives. Today, it is not bronze axes or tin cans that drive the tin market, but computing, electronics, IT networks, power generation and power storage. All the essential components of the modern world, which are increasing in demand as we turn our attention to climate change and our desire for a carbon neutral economy. When South Crofty closed in 1998, the predominant use of tin was as tin plate, which is used in baked bean cans and tin foil and things like that. Nowadays, the predominant use of tin is solder. Solder is used in all electrical circuitry as the glue that binds all the other components together. Without tin, we won't be able to generate electricity from renewable sources. We won't be able to charge the lithium batteries in our cars, and we won't be able to make efficient use of the power that we generate and store. Tin really is a critical metal. Cornwall is one of very few areas of the world where commercially significant tin deposits can be found. The reason for this is its geology. It is underlain by a vast granite batholith that provides the heat required to generate and concentrate metallic elements into economically viable mineral deposits. The geology of Cornwall consists of metasediments which have been intruded by a granite body that's risen up and as it's risen up it's created fractures in the rock and that's what's been filled with the mineralising fluids. In the fractures in the rock the fluids deposit minerals and it forms veins and these veins consist of chalcopyrite which gives us copper and deeper down we have cassiterite which gives us tin. Since records began, it is estimated that Cornwall has produced around 1.75 million tonnes of metallic tin, worth over £34 billion at today's prices. The majority of this metal, and wealth it created, came from the central mining district, the area surrounding the imposing Carn Bray, which underlies the towns of Camborne, Poole and Redruth. In the heart of this district lies South Crofty, the jewel in the crown of Cornwall's mining industry and the last working tin mine in Europe. A lot of people think that tin mining in Cornwall is purely historic and that South Crofty closed in the 90s because it ran out of tin. But that's actually not the case. South Crofty Mine and all of the other tin mines in Cornwall closed because of sustained low metal prices. When South Crofty closed, it actually had quite large tin resources left in the ground. At Cornish Metals, we've re-evaluated those resources and in 2017 we published a resource to an international standard that indicated we have around 44,000 tonnes of metal still in the ground. Following the drilling that we did here last year, we're hoping that we can increase that resource to around 60,000 tonnes of metal over the next year. And by the time we get the mine into production, then we're looking actually to have a resource nearer to 75,000 tonnes of metal in the ground. And what's really important about those resources is not just the quantity of tin, but the grade of tin that's in the ground. We find here in Cornwall that we have some of the highest grade tin deposits in the world. By comparison, most tin mines in the world operate at grades of less than half a percent. Our resource grade here is at 1.8%, so more than three times higher than the global average. So in addition to our project here at South Crofty, we also have an exploration programme going on at United Downs. A diamond drill hole was recently drilled that intersected 14 metres at 8.5% copper and 1.2% tin. We recently listed Cornish Metals on the AIM market of the London Stock Exchange and raised £8 million to further the exploration at United Downs. We're right in the middle of United Downs, halfway between United Mines to the south and consolidated mines to the north and this area of land has never been explored before and it just goes to show how much opportunity there is in between the historical mines. So we're drilling about 10 or 12 holes along the length of the vein, that's about a thousand metres long and we're angling the drill holes to intercept it between 100 and 500 metres depth. 
Once we get the core, we take it back to South Crofty for further processing. This involves geologically logging the core, photographing it, splitting it in half. We keep one half and we send the other half to get pulverised and assayed to see how much metal it contains. We're confident that we can continue to find high-grade mineralisation in between areas of historic mining at United Downs and at South Crofty. When South Crofty closed, the price of tin was under $5,000 per tonne. Today, the price is above $28,000 per tonne, driven by the demand for a metal that is critical to our modern world, but in increasingly short supply. Today, the majority of tin mining is conducted in Southeast Asia, in countries such as Indonesia, China and Myanmar. Lesser quantities are mined in Peru, Brazil and the Democratic Republic of Congo. However, tin mining is often associated with environmental destruction, social deprivation and the sponsoring of conflict. The only significant producer in the developed world is Australia, from a single deep mine in Tasmania. When I was at college, I was really struggling to decide where I wanted to do veterinary medicine or mining engineering. And because not much is taught about mining in schools, I didn't really know what that really entailed. So I decided to come here at South Crofty Mine for work experience. And that was three years ago now and I haven't left since. So I've been doing all sorts from GIS, which is Geographical Information Systems, making maps, core logging, water sampling and blasting underground. I find the most exciting bit of it, the underground blasting side where I can help out charging up the face and then doing the blasting itself. I find this to be really interesting and valuable for when I want to go get a job in industry as it's getting that experience required. Okay, fire! Ideally, I would like to stay in Cornwall. We have some of the best tin deposits in the world with some of the highest grades. These are just waiting to be extracted again. But until we have sufficient funding to do that, I will have no choice but to move to Australia or Canada to go find work. When we reopen South Crofty Mine, it will be of real economic significance to both the local community and the UK as a whole. We estimate that around 275 people will be employed directly. Those jobs will be permanent, high-skilled jobs in an area where seasonal employment and minimum wage is prevalent. In addition to the people that we'll be employing directly, we estimate that another 750 to 1,000 people could be employed indirectly as a result of the wider supply chain. We estimate that more than £600 million will be put into the UK economy from South Crofty Mine over the current life of mine. If the UK is to tackle climate change and meet its target of being a carbon neutral economy by 2050, new technologies will be needed to generate and store more electricity from renewable sources, to electrify the vehicles on our roads, to heat and insulate our homes more efficiently, and to automate and control industrial processes to make better use of the energy that we generate. All these technologies require tin. To be at the forefront of the climate change agenda and stimulate a successful green economy, the UK needs to secure a domestic supply of critical metals. This will enable UK businesses to grow and not only design or sell high-tech goods, but also manufacture these important technologies and export them across the world. Over the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a lot of developments in underground mining. The basics have stayed broadly the same. We still have to drill, blast, muck the broken rock and then take the ore to a processing plant to extract the metal from it. Um, but what has changed is that that process has become a lot more mechanised and a lot safer. So previously, when most people think of mining in Cornwall, they have the image of the miner with the jack leg, the handheld rock drill. These days, the drilling is done with mobile trackless equipment and the mucking as well is done on rubber-tired scoop trams. Now, one of the big problems that most mines have to deal with is, is the question of what to do with their waste. Previously, most mines would have had to deposit that waste in a tailings dam on surface. Now, where there's been a lot of developments over the last 20 to 30 years is in the use of underground tailings disposal. Many mines across the world are now using this, but what most mines have a problem with is the fact that they don't have enough voids available to fit all of their tailings into. 
and that's where South Crofty differs in that we actually have a large amount of pre-existing voids here at South Crofty from previous mining. And so quite feasibly, South Crofty could become one of the first mines in the world to utilize 100% underground tailings disposal, which from an environmental point of view is a massive plus because it means that our surface footprint is considerably smaller and of considerably less impact than it would be if we had to have a surface tailings dam. So the biggest hurdle we face in reopening South Crofty mine is the fact that the mine is flooded. In order to dewater the mine, we need around 15 million pounds, and that will build a water treatment plant and pay for the electricity and chemicals that we need to pump the water out and treat it. To dewater will take around 18 months, but we've calculated that the 15 million pound investment will actually give returns of around 20 million pounds to the UK economy after the first two years. And by the time the mine comes into production, after four years, we will have benefited the UK economy to the tune of around £90 million. Developed countries like the UK need to act responsibly when it comes to sourcing critical metals and ensure that we do not offshore our responsibilities to developing countries where environmental and social standards are lower than our own. In the UK, and in Cornwall in particular, we have our own legacy environmental and social issues caused by the closure of traditional industries. Camborne is one of the poorest communities in the UK and yet it sits atop a vast source of potential wealth just waiting to be extracted from the ground. I started in 1981, uh, worked with my father like many miners, huge amount of camaraderie here at the mine. Camborne and Paul were absolutely buzzing and when people used to leave work uh, you, you couldn't drive through Camborne because so many people were walking along the roads or cycling home so it was a really busy place with a lot of employment and good quality engineering jobs. Well it's a sad reflection of the, the former heyday of not just mining but, uh, but of engineering in the town. The shops are looking really tired, the properties are looking really tired. They haven't invested what I believe in, in industry, engineering, and um, they put all their eggs basically in one basket and looked at tourism. Yes, it's needed in Cornwall, but not to the extent uh, where it, it affects how people pay their mortgages, pay their rents. You know, we do need good employment that can support a family. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that mining does, not just will, but mining does offer a better opportunity than that. It gives you a wage that will pay a, a good rent, buy a good house, and, um, you know, it, it's sustainable 52 weeks a year. I think, you know, Cornwall is going to be the place for mining companies to invest. And I think we will get that employment back here in Cornwall. At South Crofty, Cornish Metals can extract the tin required to supply our high-tech industries, drive economic growth and help to resolve legacy environmental issues in one of our poorest communities provide skilled jobs and partner with education to ensure that local people have a future within their local communities and, above all, do it in a responsible manner that ensures our desire for a better climate does not negatively impact others. Cornish Metals is working to redevelop and reopen South Crofty and sees the opportunities presented by climate change and the desire for a carbon neutral world to be a catalyst for real change.